बोले वृंदावन बिहारी लाल की जय श्रीमद सदगुरु सरकार की जय राधा रानी की जय श्रीमद भागवत महापुराण की जय अज्ञान तिमीरांधस्य ज्ञाना जनशलाकया चक्षुरु नीलितम्येन तस्मेश्वरे गुरवे नमः आहोवकियं स्थानकाल कूटम् जिघान सवाया पाय यद्धप्य साध्वे ले भेगतिम धात्रुचितां ततुन्यम् कम्वादयालुं शरणं ब्रजेम नमः कमलनाथ भाई Nama Kamal Malini Nama Kamal Padai Namaste Kamalikshan Yo Brahmanam Vridhati Purvam यो वेदांश प्रहिनोति तस्मे तग्वं हदीव मात्मा बुद्धि प्रकाशम मुमुक्षुरवे शरणमहं प्रपद्ये बोले विनावन बिहारी लाल की जय श्रीमत सदगुरु सरकार की जय श्रीमद् भागवत महापुराण की आदरणीय पूजनीय पंडित कन प्रिय सज्जनों प्रिय भक्त समुदाय महानुभाव most worshipable pundits dearest devotees of the supreme lord the divine souls First, let me say Radhe Radhe to each and every one. And my pranam, my humblest frustrations to all of you. <coughs> also to our viewers on Bhakti TV. Very special Radhe Radhe and Pranam. I want to thank Pandit Satyananda Maharaj from the Satya Ananda Ashram in Arangwes, the producer of Bhakti TV, for making this possible, that we can all <laughs> see live, those who are viewing live on Bhakti TV as well as Facebook. We have our wonderful sponsors, we want to thank the sponsors, our sponsors for Bhakti TV. L the Little Store Limited of Rapsi Street, Kirep. And their phone number is 663-4415. And Sital Fabricating and Construction Limited of Felicity. And their phone number six seven one five one two six. 671-5126. I want to thank them very much. <laughs> <coughs> that through their kind courtesy, so many souls can benefit. As before, as, as customary, before we begin Katha, we'll do Bhagavad Sumiran. 
meditating on the Supreme Lord, singing the glories, meditating on the glories of Bhagavat, of Sri Krishna, who is Bhagavat Mahapuran, this personification of Sri Krishna. Riddhi Siddhi Data Siddhi Sadan Vadan Sumira Varanda Madan Kadan Kelan Ganapati Kripa Nidha Gyan Pani आनंद भवन देह मोही वरदा वरनो भाषा भार जय शिव आनंद कल भूतनाथ भव भय भक्ति विषय निर्भन गौर वरण मंगल हे ब्रज चंद मुकुंदूषण दूषण काट हु भाव भय चरण शरण जय 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 जगदीश सेवत शीष महिषमित वेद भेद जानत ते हो राधा मोही चाहिए कचना और वस्तु प्रभु जात की बसी रहे मन यह बाकी भाती पायन के पीछे पीरत वाल मुकुट शिर पर कर मुरली उर्मा शीश मुकुट कटी छो नंदला बस हृदय मन निशीद बस गुरु पद रज धर्षि गुरु पद रज धर्षि कहो भाग कथा जो शुक्र निगम कल पतरो गलित फल सुख मुखा द्रमित द्रवित सुख मुखा द्रवित संयुत विवत भागवत रसमाल मुहुर हो रसिका भुवि भारका वो पेड़ है द ट्री द वेदास ऑन द ट्री 
the tree bears the fruit and the fruit has been made even more sweet by the beak of shukadev paramhans the fruit only has ras ras hi ras there's no seed no skin only ras and that is shrimad bhagavat mahapuran nigam kalpataro galitam phalam shukamukadambitat द्रवसंयुतम पिबत भागवतम रसमाल मुहुरहो रसिका भुवि बोले श्रीमद भागवत महापुराण की जय बोले वृंदावन बिहारी लाल की जय श्रीमद सदगुरु महाराज की जय this wonderful katha been related of course by shukadev paramhans to parikshit but this specific katha is been related by naraji that great rishi muni rishi shiromani himself been dissension of shri krishna counted among dissension naraji is also brahm he is relating this katha to vasudev who had the great fortune of being the father of the lord when he descended a little more than 5000 years ago the nine yogeshwars कवि हरि अंतरिक्ष प्रबुद्ध पिपलायन आविरहोत्र ड्रुमिल चमस कर भाजन नाइन सन्स ऑफ ऋषभ भगवान ऋषभ देव गॉर अमॉन्ग योगीज टॉप मोस्ट अमॉन्ग सेंस विजिटेड द यज्ञा ऑफ विदेह निमी किंग निमी and been questioned by king nimi they are given answers which will help all of us questions we also have as to how we can become free from maya how we can become free from that ignorance of not knowing who we are how we can attain the knowledge to our true identity what we are who we are the reality of the world where we going to find true happiness why should we want to know shri krishna etc so we had finished five questions chatve prashna we come into the sixth question of videha nimi in the booklets we have please turn to page 25 radhe radhe govinda bhajo radhe radhe govinda o my chant the divine name of the lord radha and krishna they are the very star house of existence bliss and knowledge the personification radhe radhe govinda radhe 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 govinda
सत गन छित गन सुख कंदा राधे राधे गोविंदा रो सत गन छित गन सुख ओ दो चकोर है दो है चंदा राधे राधे गोविंदा दो चकोर है दो है चंदा राधे राधे गोविंदा ओ भजु मन युगल चरण अरविंदा ओ माय Meditate, worship the lotus feet, the lotus feet of Sri Radha Krishna. Bhajuman yugal charan arvinda, radhe radhe govinda. कर्मयोगम वदन न पुषो ये न संस्कृत विधो ये हाशुकर्माष्कर्म कियोपरम कर्म विकर्मे वेदवादो न लौकि वेद से चेश्वरात्मा त्र मुख्यंति सूरया राधे 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 गोविंदा राधे राधे गोविंदा राधे राधे भजु भजु बेर न करु मति मंदा राधे राधे गोविंदा भजु भजु बेर न करु मति मंदा राधे राधे गोविंदा यू नॉट प्रोकास्टिनेट व्हेन इट कम्स टू वर्शिप इन गॉड वी नॉट गारंटीड ऑफ द नेक्स्ट मोमेंट Taju chala chanda give up all deception all fraud then we'll be able to worship the lord Taju chala chanda bhaju mati manda radhe radhe govinda Taju chala chanda foolish mind know that hari guru god and the saint are one and the same don't ever see difference hari guru manu ek mati manda radhe radhe govinda hari guru राधे गोविंदा राधे राधे गोविंदा परोक्षवादो वेदोय बालाशासनम कर्म मोक्षा कर्मा 
हिदते यदम यथा नाचरे रस्तु भेदोक्तम स्वयं जो जितेंद्रिय विकर्मणा ये धर्मेन मृत्यु मृत्यु मुदय किसा राधे 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 गोविंदा भजे राधे राधे गोविंदा राधे राधे गोविंदा भजे राधे राधे गोविंदा आत्मा की आत्मा मति मंदा राधे राधे गोविंदा आत्मा की आत्मा की मंदा राधे राधे गोविंदा जो कृपालु है अति मति मंदा राधे राधे गोविंदा राधे 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 गोविंदा राधे राधे गोविंदा राधे राधे गोविंदा राधे राधे वन बिहारी लाल की जय सो द सिक्स क्वेश्चन विदेह निमी इज पोज इन टू द नाइन योगीश्वर कर्म योगम बदत कर्म योगम बदत न पुरुषो ये न संस्कृत विधु ये हाशु कर्मानी नैष्कर्म्यम बिंदते परम अब उनने पूछा कि हे गुरुदेव गुरु में गुरु ये जो कर्म योग है इसके बारे में सुना कि योग कर्म के द्वारा जो करते हैं तो ये पूरा अनंत कर्म जो हमने किया उसको इसका नाश करते हैं और अंत में भगवान को प्राप्त करते हैं इसके थोड़ा वो विस्तार पूर्वक समझा दीजिए सो नाउ द क्वेश्चन आई हैव हर्ड अबाउट योग एंड द कर्म द योग ऑफ एक्शन doesn't understand what is karm yog most people don't understand to the performance of which one attains perfection please explain in detail yaha avirhotra avirhotra jawab dene wala hai and to answer for this this question the six yogeshwar avirhotra every question he asks a different yogeshwar answer now there were nine of them so this was six question avir hotra maharaj is ask answering wo kehte hai ki ved bhagwan ki vani hai bhagwan ki vani hai isliye gyaniyon se bhi gyani ये तीन प्रकार के जो कर्म है इसको समझ नहीं आते क्या है 
वो स्पर्श समझ नहीं आते He says the Vedas, and we have been saying this throughout. I've been telling you this: the Vedas are the revelation of God Himself. Vedas doesn't mean book. This is God is divine, eternal, beginningless. Vedas are also eternal, beginningless. They're the very breath of the Supreme Lord. Niha swasitamasya Vedaha. I told you Vedas are called apaurusheya. Apaurusheya means no one has written Ved. They were not written by someone, some man, or delivered by an angel or prophet or special messenger of God, as were the scriptures of other religion. No book is meant. Vedas are eternal. Just as we take a breath. God took a breath and Vedas appeared from beginningless time. Ja ki sahaj swas shruti chari. Everything about God is divine, so His breath is also divine. Vedas are divine. So the revelations of the Vedas, what Vedas are saying, even the most learned persons, they get confused. Vedas. For every word in the Vedas, you can give thousands of meanings. Thousands. What it actually means, someone who has attained God alone can know. Vedas put a condition. Acharyavan purusho hi ved. There's a condition in Vedas. Vedas are saying, "Hey, human being, mankind." Do not try to come to me by yourself. Go to the Acharya. Go to one who has attained God, Sri Krishna. Because Ved is Sri Krishna. Let him tell you what is in Vedas. It's written very beautiful here. Parokshavado Vedoyam Balana Manushasanam. Parokshavado, Vedoyam. Parokshavad means that there is a deeper, hidden meaning. On top, it says something, and what it means is something totally different. When we take material mind and intellect to understand divine works, we're going to give a material meaning. Only someone with a divine intellect, divine mind, can understand Ved. So it says very clearly, eleven canto, third chapter, forty-fourth verse. Parokshavado vedoyam bala na manushasanam karma yo karma mukshaya karmani vidate yagadam yatha. Very clear, Bhagwat is saying, Ved is saying, Parokshavado. There's a deeper hidden. I told you before. For example, many people have taken dictionary. Karl Marx and all these guys they have taken dictionary and translated Vedas. And people, we read and we think this is what Vedas are saying. There's a lot of confusion. For example, at one place in Vedas, God is called Akash. Akash means sky, space. At one place, God is called Agni. Agni means fire. At one place, God is called Purush. Purush means man. At one place, God is called Devata. Devata means heavenly God, celestial being, Anna Maya. At one place, the soul is called Vigyan. Vigyan means knowledge. So, if we take a dictionary and try and translate, we'll make a big mess. And this is what has happened. And that's why we have to go to the true saint, someone who is trying to give the meaning of the Vedas. It says here, Bala. Hmm? 
Balanam Anushasanam is like a, a child trying to explain. <laughs> a little child, you trying to explain, he would not understand anything. And so, one who was of a material intellect, material mind, cannot understand what is in Vedas. Yaha bataya ki jo Ved ka jo laksh hai, and antim laksh, isko jo phal hai, Bhagwan ke paas jana, matlab Bhagwar prapti. Lekin, iske alag batate hai, iske viparit batate hai. The ultimate purpose, the real purpose of Vedas is for one to become free from all actions and the fruits of all actions, whereby we can attain God realization. The whole, every Ved mantra is telling us that. But instead is given temptation to us. If you do this, you will get this. If you do that, you will go to heaven. If you do that, you will have children. If you do, in other words, it's given us, it's tempting us in the world. The real meaning is trying to take us to God, but is given temptation. Now, why is doing that? So here it says, Jaise ek bacha ko dawa dena. Bahut khara hai dawa. To wo nahi piyenge. To uske saath mithai bhi dete hai. तो मिताई के अंदर वो दवा डालते हैं ताकि वो खा सकते हैं। So here आविर्भूत्रे सेन भागवत महापुराण सेन like an example is given here a little child is being given medicine that is very bitter the child will not drink the medicine so what does the parent do they take some sweet मिताई and they put the medicine in there. And then they give the child, and then the child is able to take the medicine. In the same way, especially in this Kalyuk, in the age we live, mostly people are very materialistic. They have no interest in God. Very little or no interest. Whether they're Hindus, whether they're Muslim, whether they're Christian, Buddhist, Jain. This is the age of Kalyuk. Materialism. Even people who pray to God, who seem to be very religious, they go to church, they go to the masjid, they go to mandir, the gurudwara, everywhere, and they are seeming to be so spiritual. What are they praying for? The world. To get rid of some sickness, disease, to, to be able to get a better job, to get more money. They're praying for the world. So people have very little interest or no interest at all in God. So what the Vedas do and, the other, and scriptures and other scriptures also, they give greed, temptation. Like putting the carrot before a horse. They give greed. That if you do this action, you will get this. If you do that, you will go heaven. If you do this, the same Vedas will tell. It goes on to say, the person who wants to go to heaven is the greatest fool. Pramudha, ishta purtam manamana varishtam, nanya cheyo vedayanti pramudha, nakasya pristhe te sukhte nu bhutimam, lokam hitanam vavishanti. Mundak Upanishad, first Mundak, second Kand, tenth mantra. The Vedas are saying, the person who performs action with the desire to go to heaven, who wants to go to heaven, is not only an ordinary fool, but the greatest fool. Pramodha. And after going to heaven, if he does go, will be thrown into the lowest form of life afterwards. He natramba vishanti. So, <clears throat> temptation is given. In the form of heaven. In the form of things in the world. If you do this, you will get that. If you do that, you will get this. Temptation. The reason being that this world has to go on. In order that the world go on, 
in order that this world goes smoothly, that people respect their elders, etc. All of this is given. The ultimate reality is that we should want to know God, to go to God. But because people have, don't have that, the mind is not naturally inclined, and especially in Kalyu. Very few people have any interest. They think this, if somebody starts talking about God and loving God, people say, oh, he's crazy. That man is totally crazy. What is he talking about? If someone talks about, okay, do this kind of ritual and you will get this material thing. Do this kind of ritual, this kind of yagna, and you will be able to pass your exam. Oh, wow. This is the man who knows what's in the scripture. And someone comes and says, no, no, there was nothing in the world. Do not love the world, love only God. Something is wrong with him, get rid of him. This is why whenever saints have come in this world, Tulsidas, Surdas, Meera, Tukaram, Nanak, etc. What did the world do? Whenever saints, divine entities have come in the world, we curse, we criticize, we abuse, beat them, poison. What we have not done, look at history, every saint. Because when the saint is going to come, he's going to say, hey, you are interpreting the scriptures wrong. This is not what the scripture is saying. What? Are you crazy? Because we take our material intellect and... We give a material interpretation, not understanding that this is just temptation. If you tell someone who has no interest in God, but yeah, if you do this thing, if you do that, you will get money. If you do this, you will go to heaven. Oh, oh okay. Because the decision is there that I will find happiness in the world. That's how we keep running after the world. You tell me. Any person we look at being, they look like they're spiritual. Oh, they're looking to get, see how much more money I can make. Yes, they're, they're, it is seeming that they're doing spiritual work. But behind it, there's a selfish reason. Almost every spiritual institution today, the ultimate aim is how much money. I used to uh, stay in a mandir when I just came from India, I won't call the name of this mandir. It was in New York City. And they will have meeting. And I will hear because I will stay in there. And they will bring out the account, the books, and then they will look at the yagnas and which, which personality came and how much profit they made. So if that person, if somebody came and they made more profit, oh, we have to bring him again. He's costing a lot of money for us to bring. But he's, look how much money he's getting for us. And this guy, I did two people came. <laughs> and we end up having a loss because we had to give him that china also. No, no, no. We're not going to do anything with him again. This is the truth. Somebody brings in a lot of money. We want him again and again. Again and again. It becomes a business. It's, no, it's not, a, not a thing to, not, we're not looking to how is it going to uplift people. How is it going to uplift us spiritually, but how much money. Are bhaiya, open business this time. The whole thing has become a business. All this is written in the scriptures that this is going to happen in Kalyug. If you look, there's a beautiful katha, a whole section in the Ramayana called the Kalyug Mahima. And it tells you what happens in Kalyug. In Bhagavad Mahapurana, also in the 12th canto, it describes what happens in Kalyug. All the scriptures. It tells you these things will happen. The people are so materialistic. We live in a very materialistic age. In ancient times, there was not so much materialism. We didn't have computer. Are we didn't even have TV. No TV, no phone, no electricity. Not even maybe Moroka. Water buffalo, donkey, horse, 
cart. Life was very simple. There was very little materialism, but spirituality was very high. Today, materialism is on the increase, and spirituality is on the decrease. The more materialistic we get, the more we don't have time for God. A time will come in Kalyug that nobody is going to take God's name. Nobody will believe in God. All the scripture will disappear. People will create their own kind of thing based on science, based on... There's a religion called Scientology in, in, in Hollywood, in, in, in America. Oh, big, big people, they, they, they follow that. All kind of crazy religions are being created. And people end up dying. They develop a cult. And this is what will happen in Kalyu. We've seen it. And more, worse is going to happen. <laughs> God, science. Are it today? Who is, who is Guruji? Guruji is, Google has become Guruji. People don't go to a spiritual master anymore to question. They go to Google. Google Guru. Whatever Google say, that is fact. People go on Facebook. They don't, all kind of conspiracies and all kinds of, that eventually they had to threaten these, these, these social media. They were, put, they were put in so kind of so wrong information. And that people believe. Up to now people believe that they will not take vaccination, which, is help, which would help so much. <laughs> they don't believe there is something called COVID. They end up dying and still don't believe. All because of what they've read and heard in the social media. And many of us sitting here and all who are listening to this are thinking the same way. You read something, you heard something. People send me millions of things. I feel like just blocking them off sometimes. Because they got something from Facebook and they sent it to me. All kind of craziness. I said I to them over, over, Bhaiya, do not send me. Do not take up things. Do not believe these things. And some are very high people considered to be spiritual leaders and all kinds of craziness. And the nonsense they believe. And this is what happens. This is what happens. So the greed, so that the world will go. Otherwise... This world will finish in no time. <laughs> There'll, no one will respect anybody. No, the elders, no one will respect the elders. No one will. It will be, the whole world will come to an end. So for the world to go smoothly, for this world to, to continue to exist, all this is put in the Vedas. But the real philosophy is there also. So the real meaning, the real purpose of Vedas is that we have to become free from actions and the fruits of the action. And ultimately, go to Bhagwan. Ab teen karm bataya. So he says three kind of karm, action. The word karm is a big general term. Big general term. It means action, it also means dharam. It has many meanings in the word karm. Generally, there are three karm. Karm, vikarm, akarm. Here it says, Karm, akarm, vikarm. Avir Hot is saying in the very first verse, 11 Kanto, 3rd chapter, 43rd verse. Karma, karm, akarm, vikarm. This is described in the Vedas, but how many people understand? What is karm? Let's take them one by one. Karm means mainly varanashram dharm. There's something called Varna Ashram Dharam. If I have to talk on this, it will take many, many days. <laughs> Very big topic. Varna Ashram. So two things. Varna and Ashram. Varna means categories in society. People belong to different categories. Mainly, according to Sanatan Dharam, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaish, Shudra. We can say... The teachers, the one who teaches us in society, who gives us knowledge, who teaches us, Brahman, Kshatriya, those who rule, who govern, 
क्षत्रिय वैश्य बिजनेस हु डू बिजनेस एक्सेप्शन अनशूद्र those who perform manual labors so we can say division of labor this three i don't like using the word caste because it becomes it sounds very really people put all kind of mean into this it's very difficult to put the true meaning of a word from sanskrit in english very difficult to bring the true meaning english language is, is is very i think one of the worst language if you understand other languages especially if you understand hindi or sanskrit you will think i don't want to speak this english language anymore <laughs> my guruji once said very jokingly somebody asked him do you know english can you speak in english he said no he said i know sanskrit sanskrit is called devvani devavani language of god he says what is english rakshas vani rakshas bhasha language of rakshas of course he's a divine saint he knows everything understand everything but just joking but sanskrit is called the mother of all language is sanskrit this where language is started shashiv ji shankar bhagwan played his damaru this is a little drum he has in his hand damaru and as he played it the letters came out what is called devanagrishkit letters came out language came out from that damaru so varn what a brahmin is supposed to do what a khatri is supposed to do what a vaishya is supposed to do what a shudra is supposed to do there are different rules an ashram means stages of life there are stages in life brahmacharya grihasthi vanaprasthi sanyas so brahmacharya means people of course as i said again we translate into english and we make a mess brahmacharya doesn't mean student brahmacharya means celibacy celibate bhishma pitamah was a khand brahm he took a vow that he will always remain a brahmacharya that he will never get married or anything a khand brahmacharya so brahmacharya means celibacy one not even in thought desire lust these things should come in the mind of course in kalyug impossible dharma is impossible in kalyug no one can practice little little children you go on the internet all kind of foolishness little little children they lo- they did not even go on the internet you go to you go to school your peers i remember in my time there was no computer but from your friends the kind of things you would hear and get Huh? you had no idea what they were talking about but it's been pushed into you full into you this is an example so let's suppose in this kalyug we are supposed to live 100 years 100 years so till 25 years of age long ago when you were when you were a student you will go to gurukul the 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 you will go to the ashram of the guru gurukul and the guru says till your 25 years do not even look at the picture of a woman that lust should not come you should be totally celibate at 25 years of age the guru says okay go and get married huh till 25 years of age not even look at the picture of a woman and now get married yes grahastha ashram householder get married have children earn money become a householder grihasth means become a householder so okay guru ji says so you become you get married you have children you have house cattle field etc at the age of 50 guru comes again hey whose house is this <laughs> mine guru ji whose animals the cattle etc mine 
whose bank balance mine, whose children mine, hey, nothing belongs to you. Nothing belongs to you. Leave the house, leave the bank balance, leave the children, leave everything. And you and the wife go in the forest. Vanaprast. Forest dwellers. Vanaprast. Vana means forest. Vanaprasti. Leave the world. Now you tell me, which person in Kalyug brings such a person and they call himself Dharmatma? And he has all these things in the world. House, moruka, land, children, everything, bank balance. And he's going to leave everything at 50 years of age with the wife and go in the forest and dwell. Sleep on the ground. Eat roots and fruits. This is why in Kalyug there's no dharma. And we don't hear, we don't, it's written in very plain in the scriptures that you cannot do it. Not in this Kalyug. Kalyuga Yoga and Jagya Jnana. It's very difficult. So you and the wife go in the forest, leave everything. At 75 years of age, the Guruji come again. Hey, who is this one? <laughs> My husband. Who is that one? My wife. Hey, you're the soul, the Atma. Atma doesn't have husband and wife. You go that way, you go that way. Sanyas. Total detachment. And nowadays people start renewing vows when they're 75, 85. They get married again. Huh? And you're dharma atma. Where's the dharma? So even the beginning is wrong. No, when you can't even practice brahmacharya, that's why everything else you can't do. That's why it's not recommended in this age. These things you can't do. No, you cannot do dharma, you cannot do kyan, you cannot do yoga, you do bhakti. Kāgva Sundarji tells us in the Ramayana. Ehi kali kal, ehi kali kal, na sadhan duja, jog namak jatap upvasa, jai Ram Shri Ram. Kali Yuga Jog Na Jagya Gyana Ek Adhar Ram Gun Gana Jai Ram Shri Ram Chaupais from the Ramayana. <laughs> so many people read Ramayana. Do we understand what is in Ramayana? Ramayana, there's nothing less. <laughs> Tusidasji says, everything in my Ramayana is based on Upanishad, Ved. <laughs> everything is in Ramayana. But how to take it out? Kaabha Sundarji, through the grace of Prabhu Sri Ram, saw uncountable Kalyugs. And he is relating the Kalyuga Mahima to Garuji Maharaj. And he says, Ehi Kalikal and Nasad and Duja. In the age of Kalyug, these things is extremely difficult, impossible to do. Very difficult. Nasad and Duja. What? Yoga Namakha Japa Tapa Upavasa. Yoga. 
Ashtanga Yoga. Not what we call yoga, everybody's doing yoga today. No, that's not yoga. Yoga means yam, niyam, asan, pranayam, pratyahad, dharna, dhyan, samadhi. It's yoga. <laughs> One limb in that is called asan. What we see in the world today, that is what is called yoga. The correct word is yogasan. Physical exercise. To keep the body fit. That's all it can do. But before asan, there's yam niyam. The gist of, there's lots of rules. The gist of it, complete control over the mind. Then do asan. How many of those yogi jis can do, have complete control over the mind? Huh? Impossible. Mak means how and yagna. There are so much rules and regulations. Jap, the, telling the name of God and the bead. Tap, austerities. Upavas, fasting. Fasting doesn't only mean food, bhaiya. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't only mean food. As I said, sometimes you're going to do a puja and the Pandiji says, you have to fast 21 days. That's how long it takes human beings that whatever we eat has to go through the system. The intestines are so long. That's why human beings were not made to eat meat. It rottens inside of you. It causes cancer, poison. Animals that, 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 are, that eat meat, their, their, their intestines are very short. In three days it comes out. Lions, etc. They were made like that. Not human beings. <laughs> but our heart, our mind is so dirty. If we don't get it, we'll die. You're, Pandaji, can I just do fast one day, three days? <laughs> and what fast? If, if I eat uh, meat, etc., that's not eating meat. Not drinking. That's what we call fasting. If I'm vegetarian, okay, I will not eat salt. I'll eat sweet rice. I will eat fruits. Brat, upavas means no food. Not only that. It's not only physical, mental also. Mental. There should not greed, anger, jealousy, hatred, lust, etc. should not come in the mind. The moment any one of them come, your breath is broken. You are not fasting anymore. It, understand the word upavas itself. Upavas. Vas means the thing we are going to, that, that object. In other words, God. Upa means close, get close. That which takes us close to God is called upavas. Now tell me, keeping away from food gets you close to Bhagawan? No, it means more than that. Kali Yuga, Yoga, and Jagya, Jnana, again, Kagbasundi. In the age of Kali Yuga, you cannot do yoga, you cannot do Jnana, Jagya, you cannot do Dharma. Then what to do? Eka Adhara Ramagunadana. Wanting, chant the name of the Lord. Chant. Bhagwan knows that this is a Kali Yuga. That all these things are impossible for us in Kali Yuga. Sort of his costless mercy says, okay, I make it very easy for you. Just chant my name. You will get everything. Krite yadhyayato vishnum tretayam yajato makaihi dvapari paricharyayam kalaudhat taddhari kirtanat Srimad Bhagavat Mahapuran, 12th Kanto, 3rd chapter, 52nd verse. Bhagavat says, that which is attained, krite, krite yuga means satyuga. That which is attained through great difficulty in the age of Satyug by meditating on Sri Krishna. In the age of Treta Yug, through Yagna, sacrificial worship to Sri Krishna. In the age of Dwapar, through Puja, Puja, ritualistic worship to Sri Krishna, is easily attained in the age of Kalyug just by chanting the name of the Lord. 
काले दोष निधे राजस्ति हे को महान गुण कीर्तनादेव कृष्ण से मुक्त संघ परम ब्रजे ट्वेल्व कांटो टाप्टर फिफ्टी फर्स्ट वर्ष भागवत महापुराण इवन डो दिस कल युग इज टोल टू बी द वर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एजेस द स्टोर हाउस ऑफ ऑल इल्स एंड ईवल्स नॉन बिलीफ एथियजम ईवल memory is very weak uh, age is very little everything is very little yet it has one rede- redeeming factor not found in the other ages in this age of kalyug one can become free from maya and attain the ultimate aim of god realization simply by chanting the name of the lord all the scriptures ramayana is thousands of places कलयुग केवल नाम अधारा सुमिरी सुमिर नर उतर पारा मेनी मेनी प्लेसेस इन द एज ऑफ कलयुग ओनली वन थिंग चांद द नेम ऑफ द लॉर्ड रिमेंबर इन हिम यू कैन बिकम फ्री फ्रॉम माय व्हेन चांद इन हिज नेम एक्सेट्रा मेनी प्लेसेस सो दैट्स सो कर्म मींस वर्ण आश्रम धर्म सो यू कंबाइन द बोथ सो लेट्स से ब्राह्मण what a brahmacharya brahmanas to do what a grihasthi brahmanas to do what a vanaprasthi brahmanas to do what a sanyasi brahman to do and same for all four 80000 mantras alone karma kan ved has 100000 mantras 80000 mantras rules and regulations karma kan rites and rituals and no one can do and even if you do if someone can fulfill the rules and regulation you acquire something called punya punya which will determine which heaven you will go to and how long you will spend there but when you go there what happens shri krishna tells us te tam bhuktva swargalokam vishalam kshine punye martyalokam vishanti evam tai dham anupapanna gata gatam kam kama labhante chapter 9 verse 21 geeta when you when you if you can fulfill the rules and regulations impossible in kalyug but if somebody can do you acquire something called punya spiritual merits which will take you to heaven but when you go to heaven and you start enjoying the pleasures of heaven what happens kshine punya that punya starts destroying and one day is going to finish and you'll be thrown out of heaven and because karma has become zero we have to start all over again this is why the vedas are saying he nataram va vishanti mundak upanishad first mundak second content mantra will be thrown into lower forms of life dog cat donkey worm this is why bhagwan shri ram is saying to the residents of ayodhya in the ramayan he says तन कर पल विषय न भाई स्वर्ग हु स्वल्प अंत दुख दाई ए दिस ह्यूमन बॉडी विच इज सो वैल्यूबल द देवताज आर प्रेन एंड बेग इन फॉर इट देव डू लव वॉज इन गिवन टू यू टू एंजॉय सेंसुअल प्लेजर्स नो वॉज इट गिवन टू गो टू हैवन स्वर्ग वाई बिकॉज देर इज नथिंग देर स्वर्ग हु स्वल्प स्वल्प मीन्स नॉन एग्जिस्टेंट and the worst part ant dukh dai it ends in suffering after you go to heaven you're going to suffer one day as i mentioned you will be a devata in heaven enjoying next day you're a worm grass you're in the body of a grass a tree a worm you don't understand unless you know philosophy unless you know ved you won't understand what bhagwan is saying it just be it just be word katha nice story <laughs> that's all else is very difficult to understand so that's all karm so karm then vikarm vikarm means one does not follow the injunctions of the vedas so in karm one follows all the injunctions of the vedas all the rules regulations and all you get is heaven from doing karm nothing more which is useless we have attained on countable times vikarm one does not follow the injunctions of the vedas and doesn't do bhakti also 
Just his whole aim in life is to enjoy the senses. They are called Charvak, these people. Yava jivit sukham jivit vinam kritva ghitam pibet bhasmi bhutasya dehasya punara gamanam kutaha. They are also called atheists, non believers in God. They don't believe in God. It says, beg, steal, borrow, drink ghee, do whatever you have to do to live life to the fullest. Because when you die, that's it. That's the end. They look upon the body as the soul itself. They don't, when the body finishes, when you die, that's it. You, that's the end. So while you're alive, enjoy, have a good time. A couple days ago, I saw a spiritual, who's supposed to be a spiritual person, very high spiritual person in Trinidad. He was in his motor car in, in, in Muscato Creek, and he was given a message to people who follow him. And he was saying, you see this? Life finishes. So I'm telling you all, enjoy. Enjoy life. Do it, enjoy as best as you can, because this is the end. I say, hey, Bhagwan, this is Charvak. And you are the leader. This is a nonsense. <laughs> he doesn't believe in how we expect those who are following. Huh? Blind leading the blind. Ved is saying, Avidyaya mantare vartamana swayam dhira panditam manyamana janghanyamana pariyanti murha andhe nevaniyamana yathandha Mundak Upanishad, first Mundak, second Kand, eighth mantra. Those who read Ved, the scriptures, and do not understand the real purport of the meaning, they think that doing rites and rituals, performing austerities, performing dharma, etc., is the highest aim of the Vedas, and just to enjoy the senses, they are fools. Murha. And those who believe in them and follow them, they are greater fools. And, the, and, the, and, the, and, and, and what it says in the end, Andhe nai, andhe nai vaniya mana yathan dhaha. They are blind. <laughs> Following such people is like blind leading the blind. Veda say, not me, curl with the Vedas. So those vikarmi, who would just think this world is to just enjoy and have a good time. Enjoy the senses. They don't, do, they don't follow the injunction of the Vedas, nor do they do bhakti. They go to hell. Narak. So, karm, vikarm, akarm. There's one called akarm. Akarm. This is all here. It's written here in Bhagavad. Karm, akarm, vikarm. As I told you, 11 Kanto, 3rd chapter, you can join, check it out, 43rd verse. The explanation I'm giving you is not all there. This is due to the grace of Jagat Guru Tam Shri Kripalu Mahaprabhu. Nothing, nothing to do with me. He has given that knowledge. Akarm. Akarm means karm yog. The word akarm means karm yog. Teachings of the Gita. What the Gita teaches. What does the Gita teach? One line. One verse in the Gita, one line of that verse, whole Gita. Tasmat sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara yudhya cha. Chapter 8, verse 7, Gita. Just one line. Tasmat sarveshu. At all place, Kaleshu, at all times, Ma Manusmar, attach your heart, your mind to God, lovingly remember Him, and Yudhya Cha. In Arjun's case, he was a Kshatri, do your duty of a Kshatri. You know, just perform your duty. So, duty is karma, karma means duty, remembering Lord God at all time, that is Bhakti. So, Bhakti plus karma, duty plus Bhakti. That is karm yog. And the result of that is God realization. Here it says, 
जो अपना कर्म करेंगे जो वेद बताते हैं लेकिन वो फल नहीं देखते हैं वो सब भगवान को अर्पित करते हैं वो और भगवान को हृदय में लगाते हैं तो वो अंतिम गति को प्राप्त करते हैं सो हियर इन दिस वर्स इलेवन कांटो थर्ड चैप्टर फोर्टी सिक्स वर्स Avirahotra Maharaj says, one who performs actions as outlined in the Vedas, your duty, you perform your duty as prescribed, but without attachment for the fruit. Doesn't look that I'm going to get this, I'm going to do that, because he just performed the action with the mind attached to God, offering all actions, everything to God. This is what Sri Krishna tells us in Gita. Yat karo shiya dashna si yat joho siddh das yat yat tapasya si kaunteya tat kuru shuma darpanam. Chapter 9 verse 27 Gita. Every action, whatever you eat, whatever you drink, whatever austerity, whatever you, whatever you do, whatever action you perform, offer it to God first. Offer everything to God. If we do that, our mind will become attached to God. This is a very powerful sadhana. If before you do any action, you offer it to God, then ev eventually every moment you will think about God. We don't, that's such a powerful sadhana. Before I eat something, Shri Krishna, you partake first, then I'm going to have this apple. Before I drink this water, Shri Krishna, you have it first, then I'm going to drink it. Before I eat the roti, Shri Krishna, you have it first, then I'm going to eat. Before I go to sleep, every action, every action. Before I go to sleep, Shri Krishna, I'm going to sleep. If I sleep, my body will be healthy. I'll be able to serve you. So I offer my sleep to you too. Every action. There's no action you should not offer to Shri Krishna. In that way, if we do that, eventually... Every moment we'll think about Shri Krishna. Sarvesh Kaleshu. Mamanusmar. That will happen automatically. That person attains the ultimate aim of life, Godlization. So, but there was one more card. So I mentioned, so here in Bhagavad, Avirahotra is mentioned in three. Karm, by performing which Vedic according to the injunctions of the Vedas, without bhakti, of course, but just, go, just follows the injunction of the Vedas, the most he attains is heaven. Vikaram, he, he neither follows the injunction of the Vedas, nor does he do bhakti. Just enjoys, tries to enjoy the world. That person goes to hell. And akarm, which is karm yoga, he performs his duty to the best of his ability. He can't really do it. But with the mind always attached to God. God knows only the mind where our mind is. So you can make all the mistake in the karma. But because your mind is attached to God, God gives the fruit where the mind is. You will get the fruit of bhakti, godlization. So there's one more. It's called karma sannyas. Sannyas means total detachment. So there's no karma. There's no dharma. There's pure bhakti, pure bhakti. This is the highest. Brahma, Brahma, when he was deluded by Sri Krishna, he tried to test Sri Krishna, stole all the cows and all the cowhood boys and hid them in a cave, not knowing that this was a supreme lord, thinking that he would start crying. Sri Krishna himself became all the cows and all the cowhood boys. For one year he stayed like that. No one missed anything. And Brahma finally saw, everywhere he saw Sri Krishna. He fell at the feet of Sri Krishna. And then he glorified. In 10th Kanto 14 chapter, beautiful, he glorified Sri Krishna. One of the verse he says, Jnane prayasa mudapasya namanta eva Jeevanti sanmukharitam bhavadiya vartam Sthane sthita shutigatam tanuvang mano bhir 
ये प्रायशो जित जितो प्यसितोख्याम भागवत महापुराण टेंथ कांटो फोर्टीन चैप्टर थर्ड वर्स ब्रह्मा इज सेंट टू श्री कृष्ण प्योर भक्ति ऑन अब्स्ट्रक्टेड बाय ज्ञान एंड कर्म प्योर भक्ति दिस इज व्हाट रूप गोस्वामी आल्सो सेज इन द भक्ति सामित सिंधु अन्याभिलाषिता शून्यम ज्ञान कर्मा जनावितम आनुकूल न कृष्णानुशील भक्ति रुत्तमा प्रैक्टिस भक्ति बिसाइड द डिजायर टू लव गॉड सेल्फलेसली वी हैव टू गिव अप ऑल डिजायर्स नंबर वन नंबर टू भक्ति हैज टू बी फ्री फ्रॉम कर्म एज वेल एज ज्ञान द पार्ट ऑफ कर्म एज वेल एज द पार्ट ऑफ ज्ञान एंड थर्डली द माइंड हैज टू बी अटैच टू श्री कृष्ण फेवरेबली एट ऑल टाइम्स सो ही ऑल्सो ब्रह्मा इज से ब्रह्मा to shri krishna pure bhakti unobstructed by desire for moksha which is what you will attain through the path of gyan and dharm etc pure bhakti is the highest aim of the individual soul there's no there's no higher aim than pure bhakti and that is called karm sanyas this is all explained so one who wishes to get rid of all the nuts of the heart in verse 47 Eleven can't to third chapter forty-seven verse. जो सब घाट को खोल देना चाहिए और ये मै और आप को निकालना है मतलब माया को छोड़ देना तो सिर्फ शुद्ध भक्ति प्योर भक्ति ही करना. One who wants to become free from all the nuts of the heart, the mind, to be able to become free from the ego, the sense of mine and yours, then one should worship Shri Krishna. Just pure bhakti only. karm sanyas this there's a beautiful verb, uh, pad divine composition written by jagat guru tam shri kripalu ji mahaprabhu i want to sing this beautiful divine composition a devotee saying hamare man Don't look for it yet. I'll tell you. Just listen for now. Hamare man, bhai bhano lali. A devotee saying, one who has a true yearn and longing for God. Oh, mine. He is saying to someone, my I have fallen madly in love with Radha Rani. Radha Rani. Remember, I told you Radha Rani is another form of Sri Krishna. Radha Rani is not the wife of Sri Krishna. The wife of Sri Krishna is Mahalakshmi Rukmini. Radha Rani is the soul, Atma to Radhika Tasya. The Veda say Radha Rani is the soul of Sri Krishna. She is actually Sri Krishna. Radhika Krishna Rupam Chhu Krishna Radha Sarupa Ka Sanak Sangita. The scripture says Radha Rani is the form of Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna is the form of Radha Rani. So devotees say, "I have fallen madly in love with that form of Sri Krishna, known as Radha. Even Sri Krishna serves Radha Rani." He says, "Krish, Radhaiva Radhate Maya, Brahman the Puran." I worship I love only Radha Rani I serve only Radha Rani Shri Krishna is saying A devotee is saying I have fallen in love Bhari guman divani dolati janat jag pagali Haven attained that divine love when one falls in love with God Radha Rani Shri Krishna any form of god that person wanders about without any care they have gone beyond all rules and regulation so with the feeling that only radha rani is mine shri krishna is mine they wander about to don't any care people say oh pagal hai they have crazy this crazy people only radhe 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 or they say something else these crazy people you know, they call them crazy they call them the radhe radhe people etc lok ved kulakani taji sab log kahe bitali bit, bit, a devotee 
has gone beyond all rules and regulation, all the Vedas. Look, before attaining God realization, a devotee carries the Vedas on his head. In other words, he gives the highest respect to the Vedas. After attaining God realization, he can walk on that same way. In other words, he no longer has to follow any rules and regulations. He's gone beyond it. Even in the world, somebody is going to university. After he, after he passes university, he attains his degree. Nobody now comes and say, hey, how come you don't come and we don't have a, a, a registration of you every day? Your attendance, you don't come to university anymore. I passed, but yeah, I'm finished. I don't have to take attendance anymore. So he goes beyond Vedic. There are family rules. There are all kinds of rules. He goes beyond all of that. And it seems as though he acts like a person without rules and regulations. A crazy person. Karma a karma vika vikarma adiko vipada aputali. So I just, we spoke about karma vikarma a karma. Right? So, uh, so karma, virtue. Vikarma, vice. And a karma, what is called karmio, selfless action, one becomes automatically free from all of that. All, all of that. All that is resolved by itself. All the prohibitions. Because one now follows only karma sannyas. Karma sannyas, the highest. Radhe nama sarasara sachakat amrita madhura dali. So tasting the divine, God sits in the name. Gorang Mahaprabhu says in the in the Shikshastak, Nam Nam Kadi Bahudhani Jasarva Shaktis Tartar Pitani Amitahasmarane Nakala Etadishi Tavakripa Bhagavan Mamapi Durdaiva me Dishamiha Janina Nuraga Shikshastak. God, he saying, O Lord, He Shri Krishna, He Radharani. You are so, you have thousands and thousands of names. Nam Nam Mikadi Bahuda. And you are so merciful, you have taken all your power and put in the name. Nija Sarva Shaktis. God is sitting in the name. Plus, you have made no rules when it comes to taking the name. Whether you should face east, west, north, south, whether you should take a bath, where you should sit. No, anyway. Anyhow. My Lord, your mercies are to the extreme, but my durudaiv, my misfortune is also to the extreme in that I do not have attachment for taking your name. You see, we don't have the faith, the belief that God is sitting in the name. Otherwise, all you have to do is chant one name of God. And you will fall on unconscious with bliss. People chant, they do 16 wrongs of Hare Krishna, Hare Ram, and nothing, they have fallen asleep. People are chanting Radhe Radhe, and nothing, they have fallen asleep. Because we don't have the faith to believe that Radha Rani is sitting in the name, that Sri Krishna is sitting in the name. The day you taste that, the day you have that full belief and you taste it, because the name itself is an embodiment of divine love of Radharani. You'll become crazy in love. You'll fall on unconscious with bliss. Beharati nitta kripalu swamini sang gahavara kunjagali. And having fallen in love with Radharani and attained Radharani, like a sakhi, I go walking with my swamini. I go with her everywhere in the beautiful groves of Gahavaravan, which is very close to the palace of Radharani called Sriju Mandir. The forest that is very close to that in Barsana is called Gahavaraban, where Radha Rani and her girlfriends, the gopis, used to perform pastimes with Sri Krishna, etc. We'll sing this beautiful bhajan, divine composition written by Jagat Guru Tam, Sri Kripalu Mahaprabhu. Oh. Uh... 
राधा रानी की जय वृंदावन बिहारी लाल की जय so devotees will bring the katha to an end here this evening shrimad sadguru sarkar ki jai shrimad bhagavat mahapuran ki jai 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 shri radhe jai jai shri radhe jai jai shri radhe